Uh, so good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to welcome you all to the 14th International Research Conference 2021 of General Sir John Kodalapala Defense University. And you are joining with the parallel session one of technical session three of this conference. The theme of this session is rising to the challenges of the new normal through innovative civil engineering practices. So to kick off with the presentation, uh, the session, I would like to introduce the chairperson, Professor U.P. Navagamu. Professor Navagamu is a well-known personality among the academia as well as the industry. Although his profile does not need any introduction, I would like to make a few highlights about him and his contributions to the field. Professor Navagamu is a professor of the Department of Civil Engineering of the University of Morocco. He received his bachelor's in engineering degree from the Department of Civil Engineering of the University of Moratua in 1999. And he received his Master of Engineering degree in Geotechnical Engineering from the Asian Institute of Technology, Thailand in 2002. He received his Doctor of Engineering degree in 2005 from Yokohama National University, Japan. Professor Navagamo is also a Chartered Engineer of Sri Lanka. He has research interest in ground improvement techniques, use of domestic and individual waste in, uh, construction, your uh, environmental engineering, development of cricket pitches, earth retaining structures, and landslide studies. Professor Navagamo has carried out many research studies, authored many research publications, and coordinated many workshops related to geotechnical engineering and he is one of the leading experts in geotechnical engineering in Sri Lanka. So without taking much time, sir, it is my honor to kindly invite you to commence this session. Thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, actually, I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me to this session, especially I have been involved in a lot of work at KDU and then I, I appreciate that recognition uh, for inviting me as the session chair of this technical session three, parallel session one, that is specifically the theme is on the rising uh, to the challenges of the new normal through innovative civil engineering practices. And we have um, three papers in this session. So those three papers uh, have kind of common factors, if I just say, it, uh, that is about environment and actually water. The first one is talking about this hydropower and then the, the study on this uh, renewable energy. As you know, it is a timely topic these days. Uh, the scientists and engineers are talking about the renewable energy. So this will be kind of a very good study. I, uh, that we would like to hear that one. The second one is again, it's a very important one that we, everybody knows that Kalutara uh, district has a lot of water quality issues because of seawater intrusion. And specifically this one in Pohodramulla in Kalutara district, they are going to talk about the water usage in that area and the related issues. It is also kind of very interesting. I hope that will be very interesting title today. The, the other one is, uh, we don't have to say it's a timely one, it is definitely a timely one. That is about the impact of COVID-19 lockdown on air quality in this region. So we would like to listen to that impact because we know because of the lockdown, even today, just now, we heard that the, the lockdown was extended till 21st of uh, September, right? So it means we would like to see the positive sides of this lockdown, especially on air quality. Now, uh, since uh, we have already started that, I would like to invite the first speaker of the session. That is, uh, that the topic is, uh, as some new is on renewable energy, that is about the impact of a case study of Kehelgamoya sub basing. The authors are R.W. 
MNT Lohubandara and WCDK Fernando. The presenter is RWMNT Lohubandara, a graduate of the General Surgeon Katalala Defense Civil Engineering. And now the author is working as an office engineer at this uh, Super Singer Contractors Private Limited. Without taking much time, since we want to listen to this uh, important presentation, I would like to invite RWMNT Lokubandara to present their case. Uh, that is, hopefully, that will be a very interesting one on this renewable energy and the hydropower. Right. Uh, Lokubandara, please. Have a good day to all and welcome to my presentation. Today, I would like to share our research presentations of impacts of changing rainfall patterns on hydropower generation, a case study of Kehergomaya River Basin. I'm Nantra Gubandara and this is co-authored with Dr. Kumari Fernando. First, I would like to give an overview of electricity generation in Sri Lanka. Uh, this figure shows how different sectors such as coal, oil, uh, uh, hydro and other renewable energy contribute to generating electricity. Uh, it is uh, seen how the hydropower contribution changes 27% in 2017 to 41% in uh, 2018 due to the rainfall changes. It is clearly shows that in uh, Sri Lanka significantly depend on the hydropower to fulfill their uh, energy demand as 15% uh, of electricity uh, demand in past few decades and uh, carry more capacity of hydropower generation in future. Uh, therefore, that realizing rainfall and uh, water resources management is uh, for such operation of hydropower generation is more essential. Then I would like to uh, go for the uh, study area covers in our research. Uh, this study covers uh, two rain gauges, Norton stations and the castle ray stations uh, at the uh, Kehelgomoya River Basin catchment. The general characteristics of these two rain gauges that can be given in the table. And this uh, slide also shows the reservoirs and hydropower plants at the study area. Uh, in that figure also shows that the Bimala Surendra power plants uh, operates from the uh, rainwater collected at the Castle Ray Reservoir and then uh, after operation, uh, water collected at the Norton Pond to generate uh, all Laksapana power station. Now let's move on to the methodology part of our research. But firstly, I collected daily rainfall data at selected rainfall uh, gauges at uh, Castle Ray and in, at uh, Norton stations in Kang River Basin, and then uh, prepared it as a uh, annual, seasonal, and monthly data series. Then I did some uh, preliminary investigation from these uh, series. Then I used uh, Spearman's uh, raw test to identify the trend analysis uh, given the, those. Uh, data series and the rank correlation coefficient RSP as uh, given in uh, this equation. Uh, after uh, calculating the uh, correlation coefficient RSP, then I uh, calculate the standardized test statistic TT. Uh, TT is given as uh, in this equation. They have two options. Uh, they have increasing trend and the decreasing trend. Uh, we uh, find that the increasing trend is the test statistic is greater than zero and the test statistic is uh, not greater than zero. It's uh, uh, now about the decreasing trend. After finalize the trend patterns of those uh, time series, I predict the magnitude of these uh, time series. I use the sense slope method. This is the equation I have used to find the magnitude of these uh, uh, trend uh, results. And then the median of n values of dk given as the sense of estimated uh, method q is qi given in this equation. Uh, due to the limitation of collecting hydropower generation data, uh, in that case, I use the rainfall runoff graph method to use uh, calculate the hydropower generation data for 11 years uh, from 2006 to 2016. Uh, Finally, after calculating the hydropower generation data, I use the Pearson's correlation coefficient to correlate the, these the, correlate between these two uh, factors, rainfall and hydropower generation data. Uh, let's go for the results and discussion part of our research. 
uh, in this slide, it uh, clearly shows the monthly rainfall variation over the 57 years. Uh, both figures show the similar patterns in uh, monthly average rainfall. It, uh, it is clearly seen that the major contribution of rainfall uh, coming from the southwest uh, monsoon and the second intermediate monsoon at both stations. Rainfall trend analysis of monthly uh, time series presented in following table. Table clearly shows that a significant trend was uh, disclosed at both stations in August, you can see. And then the additionally, Norton shows the significant trend during September too. Uh, although uh, test statistic is uh, not significant during uh, July for both stations, uh, it indicated more towards a significant negative trend. Uh, monthly rainfall clearly denoted the decrease in trend during southwest monsoon rainfall. Uh, small scale positive trends that can be seen in the March, and March to April in Castle Ray Reservoir and also same scale upward uh, trend in November to December uh, in Norton Station. This figure shows that the annual rainfall trends for 57 years in Castle Ray and Norton Station According to these figures also, although there is a zigzag pattern uh, showing peaks and troughs in annual rainfall, uh, the linear trend result shows that the uh, decrease in trends at uh, both stations. In this slide, uh, present a summary of uh, trend analysis test results uh, for, the, for the time series of annual, uh, annual significant decrease in trends on annual rainfall uh, were observed at Norton, uh, you can see. Uh, and although Castle Day shows the somewhat decreasing trend on annual, the highest uh, slope of the trend of annual rainfall was minus 17.17 uh, 17 millimeter per year. Then there can be seen that the significant decreasing trend in annual rainfall, the analysis was extended by uh, splitting uh, the time series into two series. Uh, 1960 to uh, 1987 and 1988 to 2016. It clearly seen that both subsample at Norton proved um, uh, the Norton proved a significant trend, uh, a significant decrease in trend. However, at Castle Ridge shows the uh, significant decrease in trend at uh, first subsample. Uh, now let's move on to my next topic, which is a summary of trend analysis for annual rainfall, uh, seasonal, uh, for seasonal rainfall. Uh, seasonal data series uh, were prepared as northeast uh, monsoon from December to February, first intermediate monsoon, March to April, a southwest monsoon from May to September, and the second intermediate mon monsoon from October to uh, November. According to the table, significant uh, uh, decreasing trends uh, on southwest monsoon rainfall were observed at Norton Station, while Castle Ray trends on southwest monsoon rainfall. The maximum slope of the uh, decreasing uh, trend of season rainfall was displayed at minus 14.67 uh, millimeter per season at uh, southwest monsoon uh, in Norton Station. In order to evaluate uh, Climate change impacts on hydropower production. The factors were compared. The relationship between rainfall variability and hydropower generation following figures uh, shows the comparison between the yearly hydropower generation for 11 years from 2006 to 2011. Same observation can be seen in the uh, rainfall variations too in both the stations. And this is the last slide of my research, uh, research part. Uh, by using the co uh, Pearson's correlation coefficient method used to uh, find the correlation between hydropower and rainfall data series, uh, the fi uh, following figure shows that the hydropower generation over the annual rainfall. Uh, research shows that the correlation is uh, 0 0.96 uh, considering, bo considering both stations. At the end of my uh, presentation, I would like to conclude that the uh, I, the study investigated as a trend analysis for seasonal, monthly, and uh, annual uh, by using the Spearman straw correlation method uh, in, Cal uh, in uh, Norton and Castle Ray Station in Cali River Basin from 1960 to 2016. 
uh, which is the major tributary of the Kehrgomaya River Basin. The sense lock method is used to uh, find the magnitude of this chain analysis. The test results of uh, the test results of trend analysis of annual series uh, showed a downward trend at both stations. However, at Norton, it was a significant trend. Uh, the magnitude of the uh, maximum decreasing seasonal trend was uh, minus 14.67 millimeter per season at uh, southwest monsoon, while the maximum increasing trend was 0 0.22 millimeter per season at first, in, uh, first intermediate monsoon. According to the uh, Results an alarming situation can be anticipated in future for hydropower generation uh, due to significant decreasing trends on uh, annual and southwest monsoon seasonal rainfall. I hope uh, you understood that how the rainfall changes uh, uh, changes patterns uh, patterns change during the last fifty seven years, and this is for the investigation with the on site hydropower generation data. And uh, this shows the references that I have used. And finally, we wish to uh, thank the officials of the Department of Meteorology uh, for their assistance in supplying the uh, relevant data. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Ms. Lokubandara, for a very nice presentation with a lot of facts. Actually, uh, I think that since we have some time and also we have only three papers in this session, we can continue with the discussion now and then uh, we, let's say, spend around five to ten minutes here in this discussion and then we can move to the other one. Uh, Ms. Lokupandar, now one of your first slide was on this... Uh, uh, increase in the hydropower production in uh, uh, compared to 2017 that 2018 had some kind of uh, increase in the hydropower production it is mainly because of i think the rainfall uh, uh, pattern or the the in increase in the rainfall so now as far as i know right so normally we say that there are like four year cycles have you observed uh, that type of cycles in this uh, last 57 years when you uh, analyze uh, your rainfall data? Uh, yes, sir. At the, in this slide, uh, you can see the rainfall variations uh, over the 57 years. There have peaks and troughs in those uh, years. But the overall trend is uh, they have a negative trend. So in that case, yes, that's I, I I observed even in uh, Norton and the Castlery that both are having negative trends. But uh, do we see kind of you know that after four years we have a drop in rainfall? It's like a drought, and then again we are moving to another cycle. Like uh, can can you recognize uh, such situation in your uh, data set? Uh, is there some something like that? Uh, Professor Vikramasurya is there, sir. Are you there? Can I ask a question? Uh, can you show the 57? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, do you have a plot of variation over the 57 years? You are without that graph. It's difficult for us to see that. Unfortunately, I came a little late. I was thinking it was starting at 115. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, sir, thank you very much, Professor Lucas, for joining with us. Because the trend to me did not look significant because the fluctuations were mm. far more than the trend. Yes, yes. And that, that's a 10 year period, I don't think is sufficient to get the overall picture because I thought there's also a 12 year period or something where there's a change. Four, there's a four year period and I thought there's a longer period also. Yes, yes. Yeah, so actually uh, I think that uh, 
Miss Lokubandar presented a 57 year data set. That's it. Unfortunately, I didn't see that part. Yeah. Can you, Miss Lokubandar, can you share your slide again? Uh, is there any possibility to share that slide again? Okay, so. You can see, sir? Ah uh, yes, yes, we can see. Uh, yes, from the Lucas. Now you can see. Ten years. Ah, this was fifty. Ah, okay. This was for fifty-seven years. Fifty-seven years. Now in this one, you can see that from nineteen sixty to eighty-seven, there is a clear decrease. Yeah. Then from eighty-seven to ninety-six, there is a clear increase. Then the clear decrease. Ah, uh, this is what I was talking about. There are four. If you took a bit longer and we went into the next increase, you would have said there's an increase. So I don't think it's correct to when you have clear decrease from 60 to perhaps 87, a clear increase from 87 to 99, a clear decrease from 99 to 2014 to talk about a mean increase or decrease. Uh, yes, in that, that gives a false impression. Ma mathematically, you will get that answer. Uh, in but, that slide, in that but slide, that slide clearly shows the number uh, of periods like what I was expecting. Yeah, uh, in this slide also shows the right. decreasing in both subsamples. No, a number don't mean anything. Uh, hmm. Graphs are much yeah. better. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I would suggest you try to analyze yeah. whether it is a sort of a zigzag pattern. Yes. Are there any data older than 1960 available anywhere? Uh, no, sir. I know. Uh, those are actually available in the uh, Metrological department. department of Metrology yeah, yeah. Yeah, that you can because find it uh, from 1896. Well, this has very nice patterns, mm. uh, three uh, increases and decreases. Yeah. So, so, Sir Professor Lucas, he's suggesting, I think, uh, it's like uh, 12 to 12, average 12 years. Uh, yeah, I, I was told about it 12 years, and this agrees with what I was talking yeah. about. The first one, but it may not be exactly 12, but there is a clear trend. A uh, second one is also, yes, uh, it's a uh, more than four year trend. Yeah, yes, yeah, so initial pattern was like four no, years, I, I think two, but two, now, two, 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 as two you cycles. said, that, but, yeah, two cycles, yes. Two cycles going down. What was the reason for you to just uh, break at uh, 1987? Was there any uh, thing, uh, Miss Lokubandar? Uh, no, break at 1987. I want to know about they have a decreasing uh, trend in of all the year, but uh, I use in this part uh, at the splitting values for we can uh, approve, we can accurate in that the we can. Uh, Accurate that the both stations and were rainfall but is decrease overall the uh, for those years. And in future we can uh, accept that they have a decreasing trend. Yeah, yeah. Actually, there is another problem when you are collecting data from meteorological department. Sometimes they don't have data. Have you faced that situation when you collected data? Uh, I uh, get some median values of uh, those two stations from calculating yes some, sometimes sometimes you missing data the other one is uh, now uh, how did you collect this one only from two rainfall uh, rain gauge stations uh, uh, no not and castlery um, my quarter is mr dr kumari fernando yeah. uh, to me give it to me sure. Okay, now nothing is. Uh, have you have you considered the entire catchment when you talk about the uh, the the hydropower production and the 
rainfall pattern right now now castlery and the norton has a catchment right so if my my my, my worries whether those two uh, rain gauge stations cover the entire catchment or not uh, i use uh, in this slide you can right? in this slide uh, you can see the uh, general characteristics of this uh, to rain gauges they have the catchment area indicated so i use those uh, catchment area for calculate the hydropower generation data okay right uh, uh, any other questions uh, or any clarifications from uh, dr kumari or do you have any other explanations dr kumari Uh, yes, from San Agustin. We actually, uh, although we we have uh, shown the Kalani River Basin, this Kehelgamu area is sub basin, so which covers those two stations, Castlery and Norton. Okay. So that's why we have selected those two. And on the other hand, we thought it's better to uh, directly relate with the hydropower. Yeah, so that's is. why uh, clearly uh, taken those. Actually, I I thank uh, the comment given by Professor Lucas as well as Professor Navagamu regarding the the trend uh, uh, looking in the different angle, uh, like uh, four year cycle and also uh, two two sets of uh, the trends, something like that. But uh, uh, in, in this study, actually, the focus is for. using a non parametric method how to analyze the trend not specifically annual but monthly and seasonal to give an idea that it it shows a alarming situation although that uh, we one can argue that the the the, the value is so small uh, but it gives an idea that okay now we have to think about uh, what to do in next step thank you Yeah, thank you, thank you, Dr. Kumar. Any other comments or suggestions by the audience? Can I comment on what Dr. Kumar said? Yes, sir. My, yes. My point is by looking at that overall picture, the trend to me for the next five years will be upwards. Where when when you analyze what you have analyzed, you showed a downward trend. Hmm. But looking at the overall picture, uh, from the back of the mind, I feel that the actual trend will be upwards. So this could be misleading. Yeah, But at I'm least for at least for at least for a twelve year cycle, it is increasing and then uh, decreasing. That and again, increasing. So that this may be the end of that decrease in cycle, and the next increase in cycle may be there. So the, yeah, the, the statistically, I think we can have more analysis on this. I'm just suggesting to look at that point of view as well for the future. Yes, thank you, sir. We will consider this one, and also we would like to uh, think about the mean standard deviation, the variation of those things uh, yes. in in split samples. Yes. Thank you, sir. Yeah, box plot type thing. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Thank you. Sir. Yeah. Any other questions? I think we have another one minute or so. Uh, any other questions or comments? This is very interesting, and thank you very much, uh, Miss Lokubandara, for uh, presenting this one. Since there is no other question. chance right so i would like to move to the next presentation uh, can i just make another comment just before you ah, move yes, on sir. yes yes uh, i i think for one of my lectures once i showed that there's a clear relationship between failures of transformers and rainfall mm -hmm. well it's not rainfall it's lightning in sri lanka lightning and rainfall are fairly related So sometimes you might find that there are things like that which you don't expect. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Yeah, yeah, that will be good, good, good addition to their work, right? So they can expand their analysis in that direction as well. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah. Okay, then thank you, Miss Lokubandara. Now we are moving to the next presentation, that is also about. water and the water quality or the water usage in households 
the that is on identifying current trends in source selection of household uh, water usage or use in pohodramulla in kalutara the authors are etd edirivira and nk gunasekar and the presenter is etd edirivira is a captain in the sri lankan army is a civil engineering graduate from the general sir john kotalawala defense university graduated in 2018 2018 and now working now performing his duties as a commissioned officer in the sri lanka army i would like to invite uh, captain edirivir to present his case captain edirivir please Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Tharke Dhrivira, a graduate of uh, General Sir John Kotalawa Defence University. Uh, my research is on the topic identifying current trends in source selection of household water use in an area in Kalutara. The content of my presentation is shown on the screen. Introduction: Water is one of the most consumed resources in humankind. considering water there are many sources like tanks ponds rivers and artificially made water sources like tube wells open wells etc and what is used what is used for many purposes such as industries and household work in this research water sources used in pohadramula village is discussed in here population is around 750 families this is located in the coastal belt of Alter district. Industries found here are mainly fishing and coconut-related industries. Water is used mainly for household purposes. Moving on to the problem statement. Not many researches are found regarding selection of water sources. Demand for groundwater and main supply has not been discussed. also groundwater quantification is not available objectives of this study are to compare the trends in selection of water sources used in the area to find why the tube wells are preferred over the other sources to find why the tube wells are used even when there is the main supply to find the sustainability of the current trends considering population increase Few studies related to water sources and their sustainability are found. Research done by Darwarat and Parasnes shows an analysis of the cost structure of water supply from National Water Supply and Drainage Board. Research by Khalil presents the consumption of pipeline water in Panamura area. This study describes the use of water sources for household work. It shows the trends of using pipeline water. Also, it mentions the purposes for which the pipeline water is used. In the case of my study, it mentions about the sources, main supply, tube well, and open wells, their purposes, and also the trends of using those water sources. Research by Boone, Glick, and Sun. Presents the choice of water sources and time allocation for water collection. Factors that determine the choice of water sources in Borneo is described by the research by Aruna and Dapper. Methodology and data collection. First, we'll move on into the data collection. Population data was collected from Ramayudari. Brief idea about the village was taken by random visits to the village. Data from the questionnaire survey were used in the identifying trends of water sources. Rainfall data were gathered from the meteorological department. The nearest gauge station was Koroskuyu. The study was carried out initially, meeting the Gram Eldari and getting an idea about the village. 
brief understanding about the trends found in the village was taken. Next, the questionnaire was planned and data were gathered. These questionnaires were analyzed using MS Excel software. Population trends and rainfall trends were obtained using the data collected. Then the analysis was done using Google Earth Pro software. As shown in the slide, area of the village is marked. Here, here is the area where the main supply is available. Is marked in light blue and the area where the main supply is not distributed is shown in pink color. Location of the people who participated in the questionnaire survey is marked in the screen. Then the calculations are done in order to find the groundwater use. As you can see the groundwater usage equals to the main supply subtracted by the total water usage. Here the total water use is taken by multiplying per person water consumption by the population. Amount of water used by main supply equals to the amount of water used in a house into number of houses. Main supply water usage in a house per month equals to the number of units of water used in a house. As the assumption Per person water consumption is taken as 135 liters per day. Per capita water consumption varies around 150 to 200 or even with higher values. Monthly water usage in a house is taken as per the monthly water bill. The groundwater contribution is calculated using the water balance equation. Here the precipitation found using the rainfall data. Assumptions are taken as interception loss is zero and deep water drainage is not considered because it's out of the root zone. Groundwater contribution is equal to the precipitation minus rainfall runoff minus evapotranspiration. Runoff is found using rational method Q equals CIA divided by 360. Runoff coefficient is taken considering the soil type and topography of the land. Here, runoff coefficient is taken as 0.4. Area is taken from the Google Earth Pro software. Evapotranspiration is taken as 1315 millimeters for the Kalugonga River Basin. Finally, the net annual groundwater replenishment is found by subtracting groundwater usage by groundwater contribution. We will move on to the results and discussion. From the questionnaire survey, a lot of information were gathered. As shown, 40% of the population of the village use main supply while 60% does not use the main supply. 65% of the population who use the main supply use other food sources while using the main supply. 35% of them use only the main supply. Here the percentages of the population who use other food sources. For example, 31% are using open wells with a pump. These are some trends found in the area. The above brand of using other water sources while using the main supply is categorized. For example, 60% uses tube wells with the main supply. This is the population and rainfall trends which were created with the data collected. As you can see, the population trend is increasing while the rainfall trend is declining. From the calculations done here onwards, Sustainability of the current trend considering population growth will be discussed. The values are projected up to 2027. Here the groundwater usage by the people is ca calculated. From the above values you can see the groundwater usage is increasing with time. 
as mentioned here runoff volume is calculated we can see that the runoff volume is decreasing gradually since the rainfall intensity is also decreasing here the results of the calculation of groundwater contribution is noted all the values are negative since the input transpiration and runoff are greater than the precipitation when the groundwater contribution is negative the net annual groundwater replenishment also becomes negative this deficit becomes higher in the upcoming years finally we come to the conclusion of the study this study was carried out to find the sustainability of the current trends in soil selection of vulnerable area the current trend is not, not sustainable because there is no groundwater replenishment there is a danger of salt water intrusion if these con conditions prevail as future directions study could be carried out to mitigate these conditions such as groundwater usage salt water in intrusion there are some suggestions to lay distribution lines in the remaining area these are the references i followed throughout my study at last i would like to pay my sincere gratitude for the gravel dairy and meteorological department who were very helpful to gather information for this study uh yeah thank you right uh, now uh, uh the so your location is pohodramulla uh, that is in kalutara district uh they are that you had uh, found on uh, 750 families in this uh, coastal belt right how many families uh, did you interview uh, in this one so i uh, interviewed uh, around uh, 70 families 70 have, families uh, the... uh, 70 families in different uh... from uh, regions of the village sir okay because right. there are so, some uh, regions where the main supply distribution is not there yeah so in, in yeah, this is a general question actually what i have to ask like have you collected their source of income they are uh, the the show, yes, social issues have you collected i have collected the income and uh, most some i am i mean not the the whole data is not presented in this uh, uh, presentation i have yeah. collected the uh, income levels and also the trends uh, for example like uh, how old their sources like open wells what you guys have been built have they cancelled their uh, connections now likewise yeah. so they are they are getting water bill also they are getting a connection from water board as well right so yes. yeah so so uh, when you compared for if in a in a slide that you had compared the, the rainfall patterns and the population rate so what what is your rainfall location or rain gauge where is so it's uh, nearest one is uh, cross two station so yeah. those data now, were, uh, yeah no 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 my my my, my 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 point is now if they are getting water from the water board that is from kaluganga that uh, kaluganga is uh, getting water not only from that area right so now they are getting water from a huge catchment that if you talk about kaluganga in that case uh, just comparing this close by rain gauge may not be totally relevant that's why i i was just thinking right but but of course for other things like ground water that open wells and the tube wells may have a direct uh, relationship with uh, your that uh, um, rainfall data that is collected from that location but uh, for the for the for the water the consumption water consumption that they get from this uh, 
a water board may not be having a direct uh, relation to that uh, rainfall pattern. That is one of my observations. How about, did you check the water quality or did you just get some information during your questionnaire survey on this uh, water quality of these uh, open wells? That they yes, had sir. some... Yes, <laughs> sir, but I have not included them. In my questionnaire survey, for each and every water source, I have gathered their opinions and their, hmm. uh, their likeness towards these uh, sources differently. Most of them, uh, from, the, from the data gathered, uh, from most of them are using the, those op open wells and tube wells uh, water for drinking purposes also. Okay, right. Um... So how did you evaluate this airport transpiration in this uh, area when you develop this uh, equation, right? So that you said 1,300 millimeters per year or something? Yes. Yeah. How, how did you find that information? Because I am interested in knowing that one because I am also doing some work on this airport transpiration that there are some... So it was found in... Uh, pay Say so it, it, it was found in this. Uh, we say the reference is okay. Given so, you, 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 you have uh, found this from, this, uh, the, from the literature, Bastions right? And, and Chandrabal. Ah, okay. You, you found it from the literature work, right? Okay. So, yes. All right, right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any so, other yes. questions from the audience? This is very interesting one, right? So, that uh, these are real issues in the country, this water issue. Right? Any. Any anyone from the audience have yes. comments, observations? Yes, yes. Uh, Dr. Nadika here. So I would yes, like Dr. to Nadika. ask. Uh, it's an interesting presentation, uh, Mr. Idrivira. Actually, I have two questions. Mm -hmm. I would like to ask because I can see that sixty percent of residents uh, don't use main supply, right? So with that, yes. uh, because you are talking about the sustainability also, so with that, have you obtained any data relevant to household drinking water treatment and safe storage? So if I simplify, uh, have they, are they using filtration techniques like uh, small, you know, house scale filtration techniques or are they use simply boiling likewise? So, have you obtained any data for those, especially for the ones are not using main supply? Because we can see it's sixty percent. It's quite large so, number percentage. Madam, I, uh, from the question, I, I interviewed the people. Actually, I didn't uh, just give the question, but I couldn't go for that detail uh, for that. But uh, they, from the from the views. Uh, they mentioned that they use the, the groundwater for each and every purpose, uh, including uh, for drinking also. But I couldn't uh, go to that deep uh, whether they are boiling or using some uh, filtration methods uh, for drinking. Okay. So, so it means that you didn't collect that kind of, are they using any treatment for, especially for groundwater and uh, that the, even for open wells, right? They just use it. So uh, yeah. that was your assumption, right? Yes, sir. Okay, the other question is actually, so you have collected data through questionnaire survey. So I have seen that yes, you have done uh, quantitative aspects so what about the qualitative aspects of the data? Have you used anything like, like Likert scale or to uh, analyze the data? I mean the uh, qualitative aspects. Uh, um, uh, for qualitative aspects, I mean, uh, Madam, like uh, uh, the, the reasons behind using these sources, why they are using this kind of trend, uh, they are... Uh, not the quantitative ones, the other qualitative uh, data, I mean, uh, reasons and uh, how well, uh, what are the purposes, likewise, the qualitative matters. 
So you didn't analyze, is it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, uh, I mean, can I ask, ask a question? Yes, yes, uh, Professor Lucas, yes. yes. Now, I'll give one example. When I was in Moto a long time ago, we did not have public water supply. Then there was a tube well, which was working very well. But then the public supply water came, and after about one or two years, then we wanted to even use the tube well, it was not working. Because I know tube wells, if you don't pump water regularly, the bottom gets, I think something happened, and after that it doesn't work. So uh, also it will depend on the size of the house. If the house is small, water supply from the municipality is very cheap. But if you have a big garden and you water the garden, you can't afford to do it from the municipal water. So I think in a study like this, you must also see whether it's just the house that is there or whether there is a garden or farm or whatever else as well. I don't know whether any of those have been looked at. Uh, since uh, there is some uh, uh, issue with the timing also, shall we move to the, thank you, sir. Shall we move to the next one? And then if we have time, we will have a comment. Know, even, even if the answer is not given to me, actually yeah. what I wanted is for him to take that into account yes, for his sir. future. Yes. Even, even that the co-authors yes. can consider that as yes. a positive comment that we have to consider that uh, that aspect in their further research studies. Yes. Thank you for the comment. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you. And then uh, we are moving to the last one of the afternoon session that is on the impact of COVID-19 lockdown on air quality in the South Asian region by M.T. Gunasekara and V.S. Varaketia. And the, the presenter is uh, Teaga Gunasekara, a graduate from the Department of Civil Engineering, General Sir John Kotalala Defense University, and currently working as an instructor in the same university. Uh, Mr. Gunasekara's research interests include environmental pollution, monitoring, sustainable solutions, environmental solutions, and construction project management practices. So I would like to invite uh, Mr. Tiaga Gunasekara to present uh, his findings. Mr. Tiaga Gunasekara, please. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Topic for today's discussion is impact of COVID-19 lockdown on air quality in the South Asian region. I'm Tiago Vinsaker, and this paper is co-authored by Vinushi Swara Etier. Let's first look at the uh, flow of our presentation. We'll first look at the background, then move to the methodology, then the results and discussion, and ultimately the con conclusion. Now, air pollution refers to the presence of harmful substances in the atmosphere. Now, this results in the decrease of air quality. These pollutants uh, come from different sources, including both man-made and natural. Full impact of air pollution is yet to be studied, and the identified effects include both long-term and uh, short-term consequences. Now, World Health Organization estimates that 4.2 million deaths are annually linked with the ambient air pollution. Air pollution is a major concern in today's world, and even in Sri Lanka, we have seen the effects of it. Uh, these effects of air pollution can be catastrophic uh, for all life on Earth. Now, it is identified that 18 of the 20 most polluted cities in terms of air quality is located in the Asian region. Sri Lanka is ranked 25th in the world's most air polluted list of countries. This illustration provides you a clear picture of the current air pollution landscape in Asia. As you can see, in most of the cities, it's more than twice the uh, standard WHO recommended values. Moving on, 
Due to the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020, all industrial and day-to-day -day work came to a standstill in a blink, thanks to the government enforced lockdowns in the region. Now, hence air pollution is directly linked with these emission sources. Uh, this resulted in the improvement of regional air quality. However, studies into the phenomena and contributing factors are not comprehensively studied in the South Asian region due to lack of resources. Kandar and Kumar investigated air quality in eight Asian countries using a variety of unverified data sources. And his, uh, present, uh, his conclusion included about to 30 to 50% decrease in air, uh, air pollution levels during the lockdown period. Another research successfully investigated air quality variation uh, in Indian cities during the lockdown. Uh, however, the comparison used only yearly average value. Vikas Singh and his co authors investigated the lockdown effect on air quality in India using 134 different data sources. This research utilized a similar approach but focuses both on historical comparison and a forecasting comparison on air quality variation during the lockdown period in the South Asian region. Now, let's look at the methodology. The methodology includes the illustrated four stages before finally reaching the discussion. The first stage is the analysis of uh, meteorological and climatic conditions. Air quality variation is sensitive to changes in the environment. To establish in the pattern of met and climatic behavior during the period, literature and archive data is used. Data collection and pre -processing. Collected verified data from automated air quality monitoring stations operated by the State Department of the United States of America was used for the analysis. Research focuses on variation of the pollution PM2.5 in the years 2018, 19, and 2020. Pre-processing was done using a combination of season and decomposition and a linear information. Time series analysis. Average, daily, and monthly data was used for the study. 2018-19, average pollution values were used as reference to compare with 2020 data arriving at percentage variation. From the trend observations made during the additive decomposition stage, it was decided to incorporate trend in the process of evaluation through air quality forecasts. Due to the uh, limited data availability, forecast was done using ARIMA model and then compared against the 2020 observed data. Let's now look at the results and the discussion. Finally, using the literature evidence and archive data, the baseline for and climate conditions of the region were established. No significant change was found over the period in concern. During the data collection and pre-processing, eight locations over five countries focusing on PM2.5 pollution was used. Outliers, machine errors, missing data was dealt during the pre-processing. The cities in question include Colombo, Chennai, Kolkata, Delhi, Hyderabad, Islamabad, Dhaka, and Kathmandu. Instead of removing timestamps and missing data or machine errors, outliers were smoothly using quantile clipping. This required both linear interpolation and additive decomposition. This is then additive decomposition chart for Colombo, Sri Lanka. On the first graph, you can see the observed values, the pattern, and then the trend of these uh, data, and the seasonal effect, the compost, and, uh, and the residual values. So what you can see is the trend is decreased. The air pollution trend, trend is decreasing uh, from the uh, fifth period from 2018 to 2021. Now, similarly, uh, we observe such uh, decrease in other cities as well. And uh, the uh, effect of seasonality was very significant in all cities in concern. This graph from Calcutta illustrated the variance between raw data and the pre-processed data. Now, let's look at the time series analysis results. Pre-processed data was compared using both daily and monthly averages. Following box plots, ex, uh, box plot examples from Colombo and Kolkata illustrate the average monthly pollution behavior over the first six months of the year where lockdowns were effective in general. Dark blue signifies the average 2018-19 value, while the light blue associates with the 2020 value. 
Now, similarly, similar uh, variance. Now, you can see here the variance uh, between the 2018-19 average and the 2020 clearly. And similar uh, values were variations were observed in other schools as well. This graph illustrates the daily average value. Again, blue color refers to the 2018-19 average condition, while the red associates with the 2020 values. The highlighted area represents the lockdown period in Kalampur, Sri Lanka, where the variance is clearly visible in the, the two values. Similar to monthly averages, an increase in uh, values of uh, daily averages were observed in all cities. Now, literature evidence. So situational reports and news articles were used to establish pollution baseline and pollution behavior of each city. This table illustrates the percentage decrease from the historical and present value analysis. Large variations were observed from the above comparison, as uh, similar to the other research done in uh, this regard. However, this method ignores the trend of the pollution, which we uh, saw that was decreasing. Uh, which results in the overestimation of the pollution conditions, the uh, variation in pollution conditions. Hence, considering the pollution trend and seasonality of each city, individual auto RM1 models were developed in Python to forecast 2020 monthly averages, and this led to the time series forecast analysis. Following table provides the range and RMSE values for the validation test conducted on each model for each city. After the forecast, percentage variation between the forecasted and observed was calculated. Following table summarized these values during the COVID-19 period using both historical and forecast methods. Most research overestimated the impact of lockdowns, ignoring the decreasing pollution trend. When the trend is, in, trend is included, true pollution variation can be identified. Finally, let's look at a summary of our findings. Lockdown resulted in the improvement of air quality in the region, that is without doubt. Significant pollution reduction was found in cities where industrial and vehicular emissions are the main sources of pollution. In general, cities reached respective lowest pollution levels only after three to four weeks of the uh, initiation of the lockdown process. Rate of pollutant removal seemed to commonly depend on the topography and the existing pollution levels of a city. Effects of lockdown is not as previous, uh, not high as previously suggested by other research, yet profound enough to be significant. We'll now move on to the conclusion. Although impact uh, of COVID-19 lockdowns are profound on air quality, the variation is not as significant as uh, the other researchers suggested. The most impact from lockdown on air quality is found to be in cities, where the main sources of pollution include the industrial and vehicle emissions. The ARIMA model is effective in forecasting air pollution trends in the current data availability, future directions, and recommendations. New normal conditions will not assist in significantly reducing the pollution conditions as previously believed to. Current actions taken to reduce their air pollution severity is effective and should be continued further to improve air quality. Although the trend of pollution is decreasing, still the overall air quality condition is far worse than the standard requirement. In the study to be conducted on other pollutants and APY value behavior in the region. This will enable the use of other forecasting methods. Improve the re uh, reliability of the forecasting model by incorporating further data points from 2021. These are the references which were used in my study. Thank you very much for your attention. And that is the end of the presentation. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Gunasekar. It was an interesting and very timely presentation, right? So since we don't have much time, this we have already uh, lost some time, right? So what is your general prediction? Let's say if the country comes back to the previous normal condition, not the new normal condition, right? So when it comes back to the original condition, what would be your prediction on this uh, air quality, right? Will it go back to the original so high <laughs> level or what, 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 what is your prediction uh, so i believe so i believe that uh, the values would uh, go high but not as high as uh, 2018 or 2019 values but higher than the 2020 values because we are actually on a partial lockdown and our industrial uh, work is continuing though okay, we are in yes. lockdown period uh -huh. so still this observation is based on, based on the trend uh, of the pollution yeah 
Okay, right. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, we uh, can have Dr. one more. Dr. Dr. Nagama, this is Ishani. Uh, yes, yes, yes uh, Dr. Ishani. Yes. Yaga, I have two questions. Uh, starting with, uh, like, you have tried to compare between uh, different cities. So my question, first question is like, don't you have to have similar land use, like similar percentage of commercial uh, use area, similar percentage of industrial area? Uh, such a comparison, shouldn't it be there for you to proceed to compare the cities? Uh, first, first one. Yes, madam. Uh, for the first question, madam, yes, I have uh, not uh, considered city to city. Instead, I look at the overall South Asian region. Now, there is a decrease. What I'm trying to accomplish uh, is, madam, there is a decrease. But uh, that it is not significant enough. Now, if you check other cities as well, uh, if we go to this uh, chart, madam, we can see that, uh, like, though there is a difference, uh, the difference is not significant as previously thought. This is due to the, uh, the trend. Uh, my research is based on uh, finding uh, the impact of trend, pollution trend on uh, the decrease actually okay the number wise there's no matching but the percentage of reduction kind of wise uh, you compare yes. Right? Yes. yeah yeah okay uh, thank you so the second question is uh, like you know in recently the government uh, sri lankan government uh, permitted many industry to continue during the quarantine curfew yes, so do we have data about what about the other uh, countries have they given like fully it is was it a fully locked down or that had they have uh, some percentage of uh, uh, yes, madam. Uh, even now, the 2021 data is available, but I did not include the 20, 2021 uh, data because only in 2020 that we went for a somewhat a strict lockdown. Right now, I think the pollution levels uh, are similar to what we see every day. It's not much. Can I ask a question? Now, uh, I think you have not done measurements, but taken from now, if you take along Gold Road, the traffic completely reduced. I'm sure that in areas like that, the pollution level would have gone down a lot. But yes. if you take internally, the pollution levels wouldn't have. So overall, yes. you'll, you'll not get that picture. But I'm sure on uh, highways and so on, there would have been a big reduction. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, that is part. That is... If that's one perspective sir, that is true and uh, if you look at the parameters i'm looking at the pm 2.5 parameter pm 2.5 is one of the uh, heaviest pollutants out there and uh, in emissions uh, concerning emissions vehicle emissions especially the main uh, pollutant is uh, said to be nitrogen dioxide uh, so in terms of nitrogen dioxide if we have uh, investigated that we would have noticed uh, that uh, decrease uh, severely, sir. Uh, sir, actually, I think uh, there is uh, some kind of information from the organizing committee that uh, the time is up for this session. But I would like to thank. I have a, uh, I have a uh, one quick question. Uh, this uh, yes, population is clearly. A burning, burning issue. You mentioned about 4.2 million deaths in Sri Lanka's ranking 23rd in the world as the most air polluted. That's pretty obvious. And when there's a lockdown, whatever the reason is, air pollution going to going to go down. Uh, that is pretty obvious. Now, how uh, you you study? Uh, is your study providing any solution to air pollution or is just a, just a statistical analysis you know, exercise? What is the solution that your study providing to, um, to the real world problem here? Uh, uh, yes, sir. The, what I'm trying to do so is like most of the research, when I went through the researchers, what I noticed is people have concluded there's a huge variation, like huge decrease. And such decrease would lead to a, a release of these uh, restrictions on air quality right now we have, especially in India. India is the industrial giant neighboring to us and they are the most uh, pollute, uh, like the polluter in, we, can, we consider South uh, Asia. So they so have- My question is what is the solution? What is the, what is the problem yes. we are going to solve? I'm, I'm trying to address the problem, sir, uh, that they have this like, uh, 
like if you take uh, india they have already restricted images but city uh, countries like bangladesh and all they don't have a uh, comprehensive uh, rule, rules and regulations to uh, control their air pollution now this leading to this that if they say that uh, air pollution is going down the focus is, will go out from that and that would uh, not uh, help in uh, restricting these emissions and helping the uh, stopping the pollution scenario so i wanted to uh, yeah so i wanted to shine a light on that issue and this pollution is transbound so we are suffering as a nation sri lanka is suffering from transboundary pollution mostly not pollution uh, sourced from uh, sri lanka so i wanted to shine a light on the uh, fact that uh, uh, this is not an issue, uh, not it should not be considered a permanent thing and it should not considered a uh, means of uh, uh, releasing the restrictions on air pollution yeah thank you mr gunasekar i think i think i have to uh, just uh, stop this uh, question and answer sessions here right uh, i would like to thank the presenters uh, miss lokubandar captain ejrivir and mr gunasekar for their very nice presentations and very time their presentations on timely topics thank you very much and also i would like to thank the 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 audience actually i want to thank professor lucas for his comments and uh, dr kumari and then dr gunasekar dr nadika and dr ishani and professor kumarwadu for their comments and suggestions to improve this research and i hope that uh, the the researchers can consider the comments made by the audience for their further studies so i would like to conclude this session thank you very much for your participation and i hope in the in the 2022 uh, uh, sessions that we will have kind of an extensions to these studies and we would like to see the progress on this thank you very much uh, ladies and gentlemen okay thank you very much sir Thank you, Professor. Uh, that was. Sorry, sir. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. So uh, that was a very fruitful session, and uh, there were very good comments and there were very good questions and answers as well. So now we have reached the end of technical session three of the International Research Conference of 2021, uh, General Surgeon for the Law Defence University. Uh, I would like to invite Dr. Tamocha Kolutunga, Head of Department of Department of Civil Engineering of KDU. to deliver a word of thanks yes, thank you to sita uh, so as to sita mentioned we have now come to the end of the civil engineering session of the 14th uh, international research conference of general sir john kotalawal defense university so uh, chairperson of the session uh, professor udeni nagamu a uh, professor of the engineering faculty of uh, kdu Uh, professor rohan lucas uh, professor uh, sunil vikram surya uh, professor asis kumar wadu and uh, the authors and my dear colleagues and students very good afternoon to you all so now it's the time to convey our gratitude uh, to all who extended their support to make uh, this session a success now uh, this is the second day of the conference and we have already witnessed Uh, that this conference is a success and uh, the success is the result of uh, of the dedication and uh, hard work of many people so first i would like to thank a uh, vice chancellor major general milind the peeris uh, deputy vice chancellors and the conference organizing committee for taking the challenge of conduct conducting this research a uh, conference at, uh, amidst the hard time hard times uh the country is facing today also i like to uh, express my uh, deep gratitude to uh, professor udeni navagamu uh, for adjusting your busy schedule to be with us today uh, to chair this session and uh, and uh, professor navagamu is uh, uh, not new to kdu uh, he has always been a support to us uh, thank you sir thank you very much for your contribution uh also i would like to uh thank all the authors 
who are here uh, today to present your valuable research. It is your hard work which, had, which added value to uh, this session. Also, I would like to express my gratitude to Dean, Faculty of Engineering, Engineer Udya Dampage, uh, for the immense support uh, given in organizing the event. Also, I could not forget the support of the session organizing committee uh, led by Dr. Ramya Kumar Nayaka. Uh, thanks to them, I had an easy time when organizing uh, this session. Also, I would like to thank all the academic, academic supporting and non-academic staff of the faculty who helped in various ways to make this session a success. Finally, I'd like to thank all the audience today uh, for being with us and for adding life to the session by asking uh, very interesting questions. Uh, so thank you all and have a good day.